things are going along pretty well in your business. And then one random Tuesday afternoon, you receive a letter or an email message from someone you've never heard of accusing you of patent infringement and demanding that you cease and desist manufacturing your products or inviting you to get together and meet to discuss licensing royalties. No matter how many of these letters you've received in the past, every one of them feels like an invitation to an IRS audit. They can really ruin your day. This video reviews seven pretty simple defenses to patent infringement that you could take a look at while you're contacting your patent attorney and waiting for him or her to get back to you. Some of these are actually get out of jail free cards. Hi, my name is John Farrell, I'm a patent attorney. Welcome back to my channel. If you build and sell successful products, eventually you're gonna get one of these letters. There's lots of benefits living in a capitalist free society with a strong patent system where inventors or inventions are protected. But patent litigation is not one of them. And as we've discussed in prior videos, patents are complicated documents. They're difficult to understand. They're difficult for professionals to understand, for judges to understand, let alone juries who are charged with the responsibility of determining infringement. Patent claims are difficult to read. The terminology is difficult. And sometimes it's just difficult to know whether a specific patent claim covers a given process or product. And as I've often said on these videos, even with 30 years of experience of reading and writing and litigating patent claims, occasionally I still have difficulty understanding whether a patent claim applies to a specific product. And the high cost of litigation really turns on this need to have experts help us understand what patent claims are really saying and to help us understand the technology that's being covered by these patent claims. Especially if this is your product that's being accused of infringement, it's almost like trying to interpret your own CAT scan while you have a migraine. Let's leave the patent claims to the professionals, but what I'd like to offer you today is seven non-infringement arguments that you can be thinking about that don't involve the patent claims at all. The first defense is really easy. Before pulling out the umbrella like Chicken Little and screaming that the sky is falling, make sure that there's really a patent that you're being accused of infringing. Sometimes my clients will send me long, detailed letters accusing them of grave acts of patent infringement with breathtaking requests for royalties to compensate for the damages caused by this infringement. In fact, there's no patent at all. It's merely a patent application that the accuser is sending to the client saying, we demand that you stop because we've filed a patent application on this process or we have a patent application pending on this product. Well, until a patent actually issues, there can be no infringement. The very first thing you should check when being accused of patent infringement is to make sure that in fact there's an issued patent. Look at the first page of the patent at the top right hand corner. There should be a date certain on which that patent issues and there should be a US patent number. If it's merely an application number or a filing date, then there is no patent. So if you're merely being accused of infringing a patent application, we really can't say whether there's infringement or not because we don't know what the patent claims are gonna look like if and when they eventually issue. So step one, defense one check to see that the patent that you're being accused of infringing is actually an issued patent and not merely a patent application or a published application. Defense number two is the flip side of the issue date. It's the expiration of the patent. Is the patent still valid? A utility patent is valid for 20 years from the date that the patent was filed. Now there may be some additional days, some extension days that are added to the validity period of the patent, the term of the patent. And these will be listed with an asterisk, additional days. And it may say 
35 additional days or 85 additional days, check on the first page of the patent to see if the issue date it has been extended by some number of days, but generally it's not very many days. And if the patent has expired because it's been more than 20 years from the date of filing, generally these extra days are not gonna to add too many days in extension. So defense number two, make sure that the patent hasn't yet expired. Now a third defense may relate to a patent of your own that you have filed covering the product you're manufacturing. If you're manufacturing or selling a product that is covered by your own patent, check to see whether your patent was filed prior to the filing of the patent application that you're being accused or the patent that you're being accused of infringing. If you filed your patent first, and you're practicing your patent, that is you're manufacturing what's in your patent, and the later filed patent, the patent that you're being accused of infringing, covers the same material that's in your patent, then that later filed patent is not valid. And a very effective defense is to go back to the accuser and say, whatever your patent claims, it must be different than our product because our product practices our patent and your patent couldn't be the same as our patent or your patent would be invalid. So either we're not infringing you or your patent is invalid. A very strong third defense. A fourth defense to patent infringement arises if your product was on sale more than one year prior to the filing of the patent application that you're being accused of infringing. If your product was on sale before more than one year earlier than the filing of the patent application, that patent is invalid. And this is particularly useful if you're selling on Amazon and someone comes along and says, hey, you're infringing my patent. And you've been selling on Amazon for years, certainly more than a year prior to the filing of that patent application. That history on Amazon is gonna be very easy for you to prove. It's gonna be very easy for you to dispatch this claim of patent infringement under this fourth defense. Similar to the fourth defense, a fifth defense arises when your product or your process is described in a printed publication more than one year prior to the filing of the patent application that you're being accused of infringing. So for example, if you have a product that's described in a catalog, or you have a product that's described in a trade publication or a newspaper, or a magazine article, and there's sufficient description of the inventive part of your process or your product, then that publication will act as a bar to the validity of the later filed patent application. So that's the fifth defense. There's a sixth defense also that's time related, and this sixth defense is public use. Was your product in public use more than one year prior to the filing of the patent application that you're being accused of infringing. Now, an example of public use is, for instance, a fajita machine that's being used in a restaurant. You've invented a fajita machine. It's on public use in a restaurant. Everybody can watch it making fajitas. The fajitas are pumping out of the machine. They're being delivered to the tables. This has been in public use for more than one year prior to the filing of the, the patent application you're being accused of infringing. That one year period of prior public use acts as a bar to the validity of the patent that you're being accused of infringing. Therefore, you're not infringing the claims of this later filed patent because the patent is invalid by virtue of the prior public use. And then the seventh defense is a cousin of the sixth defense, the public use defense. And this is the commercial use defense. Now the commercial use defense is similar to the public use defense, except that the commercial defense arises when the use is used in commerce, but not necessarily in public. It can be a private use, it can be in a factory, it can be embedded in a machine, it can be part of a process that's used in secret in a factory that nobody can really see. But 
it's a use that is in commerce. It's in commercial use. And if there's a commercial use more than one year prior to the filing of the patent application that you're being accused of infringing, that earlier commercial use bars future patent applications that were filed more than one year after that commercial use. And therefore it acts as a complete defense to the infringement of those patent claims. Okay, these are the seven pretty simple defenses. Defenses that are fairly easy to determine without diving into the patent claims. If you've got some other defenses, put them in the comments section below. We'd love to read about them. In the meantime, thank you so much for visiting the channel again, for watching this video. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Take care.